Hey gearheads and welcome to Grouse Shock. I'm Corey and this is the 2022 Toyota Highlander XSE all-wheel drive. This is Toyota's premium midsize three-row crossover. All new for 2020. Here in 2022, the segment has got incredibly crowded from Kia Sorento, Ford Explorer, uh, GMC Acadia, Hyundai Santa Fe, you name it, everybody has a three row crossover. And Toyota has long been known for their reliability and longevity, but does this 2022, only two years after a refresh, have what it takes to remain relevant in this market? All right, starting under the hood of this family hauler from Toyota, you get their 3.5 liter V6 that is in practically everything they make. In this application, it makes 295 horsepower, 263 pound-feet of torque. Good for 21, 29 on the MPG. And this one can tow, at, if optioned correctly, up to 5,000 pounds, which uh, for this type of vehicle is plenty. Up front, the XSE trim is the sport trim, and this one definitely lets you know about it. Uh, Toyota's styling department has gone a, a little bonkers as of late because uh, we've got tons of grill up here. One thing I will note, uh, historically, Toyota big grills have been mostly plastic, but if you look here, this is actually open all up here. Uh, there are a few closed off sections, but this is primarily open as is this lower grill. So while you do have a lot of grill real estate up front, it is actually letting all that air through and into the engine bay, helping cool that 3.5 liter uh, V6. One thing I will note while we're talking about air uh, is this little uh, addendum right here to the front. You actually do have a functional air curtain to help get air around the front corner of this vehicle and it does dump out inside the wheel well over here which getting around these big 20 inch wheels uh, it's a little tight in there for what this vehicle is. Styling up front you get LED headlights, LED running lights, Interestingly though, incandescent turn signals, and that's the same back in the back. Moving around to the side profile of this, you definitely see it is a larger vehicle and it feels really big back here over the rear wheels. Toyota has been carrying this design line through many of their products, which surprisingly enough can be found on their Supra model and the Sienna minivan. So this very bulging accentuated rear fender uh, is stolen from their Supra sports car, which yes, is partly BMWs, but we, we won't get into that here. We drove it, go, go check that video out. We'll link it down below. All told, this is a very good size, midsize three row crossover very sporty look to it. I love the look here of these taillights that kind of bulge out and wrap around the rear fender. And then you've got uh, vortex generators. Toyota has been really into how air flows around vehicles lately. So not only do you have that air curtain up front, you've got vortex generator here, and there is another one on uh, the front where typically you would find the mounting point for your rear view mirror but these are actually mounted to the door here. So again, Toyota pays a lot of attention to how air moves around a vehicle. Speaking of which, coming back to the back, you get this very large overhang diffuser uh, that helps guide air and channel air over the back of the Highlander. And again, those wraparound taillights, LED, stop lamps but again i told you incandescent lights here you get nice cleaned up sporty styling uh, two actual exhaust tips back here but they're both on the same side and you get 
a power hatch. We'll talk more about the interior space here in a little bit, but with the third row up, you don't get just a ton of room back here behind the third row. You'll see when I get into it what this third row is really meant for. You do get the requisite crossover hidden storage under the floor. So here you've got all the necessary tools to change your tire and it is spring in East Texas. So even though we're not sponsored, gotta have a California car duster to keep all that pollen off your vehicle. But why don't we take a minute, hop inside, see what this three row crossover feels like on the inside because let's face it, that's where you're gonna be spending all your time, not necessarily admiring the looks. All right, sitting inside the 22 Highlander XSE, the sporty intentions are made even more prevalent by this red Syntex interior synthetic leather seating. Not only do you get it on the doors, it is all over the fronts and backs of these seats, which we'll get more into when we move to the back. You do get red stitching here on the dash. Interestingly though, not on the steering wheel. So gray stitching on the steering wheel. A very sporty appearance in here. You get uh, some carbon fiber look trim around the infotainment system, but you can actually see the primary intention of this be vehicle being a family vehicle. There are cubbies here in the dash, here in the dash uh, for storing knickknacks things uh, would be a great road trip vehicle just for cramming stuff everywhere there is some very interesting packaging in here because again being a family vehicle you get your sunglass holder that doubles as a rear view mirror for seeing rear occupants unfortunately when that is down the rear view mirror is so high and close to this that you're actually blinding yourself from your actual rear window view you'd be better off just using your rear mirror rear view mirror to see those rear seat occupants yeah it is an auto dimming you do have your home link but buttons built in there um, another issue with this placement is it's so high up it's really hard to grab and adjust you almost have to grab it from the side it's it's, it's awkward to say the least some other awkward things inside here are uh, what you do with your phone. So I have an iPhone 12 Pro Max, and uh, when I am sitting in here, I have got options for what to do with it. The center console here does slide open. There is a cheap wireless charger, but with a case, it's just a little bit too big for the wireless charger. So. You have to flip that out of the way to get down to the actual center console to use it, which is odd because this vehicle doesn't have wireless Apple CarPlay either. So this is almost irrelevant to me and almost just in the way of typical usage. Center console is interesting with the sliding function instead of actually having an opening lid, but that does allow people in the back to get up here, I guess. Other things you could do with your phone can slide it here between the cup holders so that's nice but you're gonna need to plug it in so you can plug it in for wired CarPlay and place it up here as you run the cable through this little hole down to the USB-A only interface with the infotainment system you do have two USB-C's here but they're for charging only as is the 12 volt adapter right there I would have thought an interesting place for a wireless charger would have been right here. It's unused space, otherwise it's just going to collect things, and then you can actually get to your center console. So again, just kind of odd packaging that I don't really expect from a Toyota. Usually Toyota thinks through things a little bit more, so it's it's been an adjustment for me. Another odd bit of interior packaging are the climate controls and the climate vents. It seems like they should have actually flipped them because now your climate control knob is right below your very small volume knob. Kudos to Toyota for actually giving us a volume and tuning knob on the infotainment screen, 
but due to the massive size difference and the proximity of the two, you're naturally probably going to be grabbing for your climate before you do the actual tuner, which would lead me to use the steering wheel mounting controls more than anything else. The infotainment on this, I mentioned uh, this was fully redesigned for the 2020 model year. So this vehicle is two years old and it feels like it's five years old when it comes to the competition. Again, no wireless CarPlay. Toyota's built-in infotainment, this is their previous uh, iteration of it. They are rolling out the new in-house built uh, in the Lexus NX and the Toyota Tundra systems. But this just feels a little out of date and behind the times. The climate controls are fairly easy to use and operate. You've got uh, tri-zone climate in here, so the rear occupants can actually adjust their own air back here on the back of the center console. And then while you do have a color uh, driver information screen here in, in between the very large tack and speedometer, with the normal sized sunroof open, there is just so much glare on the screen that you can hardly even read it from up here. Again, just some weird packaging things that I really don't expect from Toyota. That's all the negative I really have to say. And I, I just had to get it out because otherwise this is a spectacular car. The build quality is solid. It doesn't really creak or rattle. It, it is well put together. It is comfortable in here. The materials are nice. Even this faux carbon fiber has texture to it. It's not just smooth. I do wish that these cubbies had a rubberized material so stuff didn't slide around instead of the hard plastic. But even that is nicely done. All nice materials in here. It's very comfortable, very easy to get in a good seating position. I do wish that we had memory seats on this XSE trim, but we don't. The uh, Syntex uh, synthetic leather seats are a, a pretty convincing uh, imitation that you wouldn't even really know if no one told you. This one does have uh, three level heated seats, no ventilated seats on this trim, but Toyota's got to have something to build you up to. Another interesting point about this XSE trim is it's very sporty in nature. I mentioned the uh, design lines on the side hearkening back to the, the Supra, uh, but being an SUV, they've also baked in downhill descent control, a rock and dirt mode. I don't know who is rock crawling uh, in their Highlander XSE, a mud sand mode, normal, sport, normal, and eco drive modes. Lots of different combinations you can come up with. I'm going to say normal on this style, sport on this lever, and that is the combination for a fun time behind the wheel of this XSE. Let's move to that middle row and see what the space is like back there. All right, so the rear seating area has rear manual sunshade peasant blockers, which I absolutely adore in family vehicles. Another rear window feature that I like, all four windows have express up and down features built in. So huge plus, you can operate that from the driver's door or any of the passenger, passenger doors. I did mention the front seats were red and you can tell sitting behind yourself here, everything on the back side of them is red too. So there is a lot of red making the kids angry back here seeing all this red. Uh, as far as seating comfort, I'm 5'10", I'm sitting behind myself. I've got plenty of leg and foot room back here, a stadium style seat so I can actually see over the headrest in front of me. It's comfortable got a manual recline. You've got a built-in armrest here. Uh, hard plastic cup holders on the floor. So it really is a two plus two plus three. We'll get into that in a little bit. Seating. Uh, again, seating comfort is good. They are not hard. They're not too soft, not too squishy. They are very comfortable rear seats. I mentioned up front, uh, we do have climate controls for the rear vents back here. So uh, you can control the climate back here. You've 
We've got two USB-C power charging ports down there on the bottom as well. Speaking of climate, looking up to the ceiling, the rear climate vents for the second row, it's coming right down on my forehead right here. So interesting placement. I'm sure that has something to do with the sunroof and what they offer with sunroofs. The rear uh, third row seat has them in a little bit better place, but uh, very interesting placement uh, for those. You can see I've got my son's car seat here on the passenger side, but these are not car seat friendly second row seats. So to get into the back row of the Highlander, there is a lever here that you pull on the shoulder, folds it forward and moves it forward. You do get hard plastic steps here that allow you to climb easily into the back seat. And before we talk too much about the back seat, now that I've got this exposed, I really like this thoughtful piece of plastic right here on the side that helps keep the seat belt and the buckle secure and out of the way for climbing into the rear seat or if nobody's actually sitting here and you've got all the windows down enjoying a beautiful East Texas day like today. You don't get that constant thwapping of metal against hard plastic. As far as the seating goes back here, um, well, it's tight even before I pull the seat back onto myself. And this is where we discover that um, these are purely a bonus seat for if you're bringing your kids, friends along with you, because I, I couldn't see putting a full-size adult back here. Uh, I, I could hardly see putting children back here for too long. In fact, uh, these seats, you don't even get the red uh, material on them. They are mostly an afterthought and will probably stay folded flat for a majority of their time. They do, oh, I'm gonna give myself a little more room here. They do actually recline with the handle over the shoulder. So if that front seat is out of the way, you can actually get into a somewhat comfortable seating position, but it kind of defeats the purpose of having a seat there in front of you. I will go around to the very back, if I can climb out of this thing, whew, and show you exactly what folding those rear seats looks like. So again, we mentioned earlier, there's a little bit of space back here. You can see just how far these recline. My head was actually hitting the roof here if I were to sit up properly. It is a, a very interesting seating position, all told. But you flip that handle forward and the seat folds flat. And it is 60-40 split. This is more than likely how you are gonna spend a majority of your time with the Highlander because there is tons of space back here with that third row folded flat. And a very soft close rear hatch, almost embarrassingly so. That's enough around the outside and the inside. Let's actually get behind the wheel, fire up that engine, and see how this sporty intentioned three-row crossover performs out on the road. All right, starting up the 22 Toyota Highlander SSE. I like you've got an actual mechanical gear selector here that kudos on that and it does actually have a manual drive uh, mode as well so you can actually row through the gears like a sporty vehicle would being a crossover it handles off-road stuff so driving you know this is about what you would expect for a crossover to do going through a field somewhere maybe at soccer practice not quite sure what this rock dirt mud sand business is here but it does have a torque vectoring all-wheel drive system which we're gonna put it in sport mode here and slap it over into manual and see just what that does Uh, I know 
notice I, I missed in its mind the shift from first to second so it went ahead and shifted for me so it doesn't hold gears uh, quite like you would expect it is a very smooth shifting eight speed traditional automatic though very good system the powertrain in this it is bulletproof it's toyota build quality through and through and you're not really buying a three-row SUV for corner carving fun, but I have been told, I'm about to experience for the first time, that this actually is more fun than it has any rights to be. So we're going to turn down an East Texas back road here and see just what this is like when uh, the road gets a little bit on the curvy side. So I'm just going to leave it in traditional drive and uh, again we've got nearly 300 horsepower all-wheel drive, torque vectoring all-wheel drive. There is actually a screen on this infotainment that will show you where the power is going, what wheels it's going to. It's actually quite fun and mesmerizing to watch. Let's see passing power, what we can do around this Jeep. This does, as you can see, we're stopped here at a red light in traffic, does have auto start stop and an interesting feature that I don't know that I've seen in any other vehicles has a countdown timer alerting you to how long that engine has been turned off, which for this stop was a minute and 24 seconds. You also have an electronic parking brake and a brake hold feature. So I have not tested the brake hold feature with the auto start stop. But I have tested the fully adaptive radar cruise and uh, that has allowed me to test out that it is a full stop feature. So it will come to a full stop for you. Other Toyota, older Toyota models that I have tested, at about 20 miles per hour, it bails on you. It beeps to let you know that it's done doing its thing and all the rest of the braking is on you. This is a full stop unit. It will engage the engine auto start stop. It will start the engine up on its own when it realizes the vehicle in front of you has started moving and it will alert you to either press the accelerator pedal or the resume plus here on the adaptive cruise control features on the steering wheel to re-engage that adaptive cruise session. Thoughtful system. I don't know, I guess for me, if I'm gonna use full start-stop adaptive, adaptive cruise, I'd rather it just 
will start on its own too. I, I'm sure the Toyota legal team is making sure all T's are crossed and I's are dotted uh, when it comes to the safety features of this vehicle. Final thoughts on this 2022 Toyota Highlander XSE all-wheel drive. It's a very comfortable vehicle that has Toyota build quality and durability baked right in. This XSE all-wheel drive trim with its red seats lends you to believe it's a very sporty vehicle, which it is fun on the back roads, but this is no Supra, no matter what body lines they put down the sides. In a sea that is becoming ever so crowded with three row crossovers, this will make many families very happy for hundreds of thousands of miles because it is a Toyota. But with many other competitors, this may not be the best option on the market. Stay tuned for future reviews and be sure to check out our Ford Explorer and Kia Sorento videos. As for me, I'm going to go enjoy this while I've still got it.